Section 1-7, inverse relations and functions. We have an inverse relation. Exist if one relation contains a, b, while the other relation contains v, a. So if a function contains the point 1, 2, then its inverse contains the point 2, 1. Graphs are reflections of each other in the line y equals x. So if we had the function y equals the square root of x, right there, and then here is the line y equals x, then its inverse will be a reflection over that line. Maybe inverse functions if graph passes the horizontal line test. Now, what is a horizontal line test? A function f has an inverse function, f inverse, if and only if each horizontal line intersects the graph of the function in at most one point. So here we have the function, here we have a horizontal line, and no matter where you draw the horizontal line, it only crosses the graph or the function one time. If function passes the horizontal line test, it's said to be one to one. Apply the horizontal line test. Graph the function using a graphing calculator and apply the horizontal line test to determine whether its inverse function exists. So here we have a quadratic function in number one. Here's the quadratic and that fails the horizontal line test. Therefore, its inverse will not be a function. Number two, we have an x to the fifth. These act like an x to the third. Now, if it dipped down and went back up, it failed the horizontal line test. But as it sits, it passes the horizontal line test, so its inverse will be a function. It is one to one. Finding an inverse function. Step one, determine whether the function has an inverse by checking to see if it's one to one using the horizontal line test. In the equation for f of x, replace f of x with y and then interchange x and y. In other words, switch x and y. Solve for y and then replace y with f inverse of x in the new equation. State any restrictions on the domain of f inverse. Find inverse functions algebraically. Determine whether f has an inverse function. If it does, find the inverse function and state any restrictions on its domain. So here's our first function. It is a square root function. Here it is graphed on a graphing calculator and its domain is one to infinity and its range is zero to infinity. As a matter of fact, that's gonna be a bracket. Because if you plug one in, you get zero. Now let's find the inverse. We're gonna plug x in for f of x, or x in for y, and then we're gonna plug y in for x. We have y minus one. Let's divide by two. We have x over two is equal to the square root of y minus one. Let's square both sides. y minus one equals x squared over four, and then we'll add one. So y is equal to x squared over four plus one. Now, the result has no issues. It has no radicals, it has no denominators, or at least variables in the denominators. But this domain, the new domain, inherits the range of the original function. So now the domain is zero to infinity. Number two, this one also passes the horizontal line test. So it has a function, its inverse is a function. Now it's, uh, its domain is, uh, let's see, negative infinity to uh, a half. Uh, X cannot be a half, that, if, it, if it did, then we'd have zero in the denominator. So negative infinity to a half, union with uh, one half to infinity. Its range is uh, also, looks like uh, we have this horizontal asymptote at one half, and we do, uh, that's the ending behavior. So the range is negative infinity to one half, union with one half to infinity. So now let's get, uh, let's get the inverse. We have x is equal to y over two y minus one. Now let's multiply by two uh, y minus one, two y minus one, times x equals y. We have 2xy minus x equals y. We distribute. Now let's get the y's on the same side. 2xy minus y. Let's add this x over equals x. Now we can factor a y out of this. Factor a y out. We get 2x minus 1 equals x. And then we have y is equal to x over 2x minus 1. So we have f inverse of x is equal to x over 2x minus 1, so it's its own inverse. And I gotta go back to this one right here. I, I left, this is this is bad, what I did. I didn't write this as f inverse is equal 
to x squared over 4 plus 1. Now let's get back to this one. Uh, it is its own inverse, and so the domain inherits the range of the original function. And so this is going to be negative infinity to 1 half, union with 1 half to infinity. Find inverse functions graphically. Use the graph of relation A to sketch the graph of its inverse. So here's our first example. And we have the point negative 1, 2. We have the point negative 1, 2 roughly. So on the inverse, we should have 2, negative 1. So this point goes to 2, negative 1 right there. And then we have 0, 0. And we have the point 1, negative 2. So we have 1, negative 2 on the original function. So we should have negative 2, 1 on the inverse, negative 2, 1 right there. So we have negative 2, 1 right there. And uh, this one is going down to negative infinity. So uh, that means this one is going to do this right here. Going to go up and go through that point right there, cross over and do that action right there. So now if we take the line y equals x, roughly, uh, this it's a reflection over the line y equals x. Let's do the same for this one. Here I have a nice point, which is uh, on the original is negative 1, 0. So mm -hmm. we should have 0, negative 1. So 0, negative 1. We, have, uh, we actually have 0, negative 1 on the original. So we should have negative 1, 0 on the other one. So these two are reflections over the line y equals x. And now we need to get a couple more. How about 1, negative 2? 1, negative 2. So negative 2, 1 should be on the inverse. Negative 1, 2, 1 should be on the inverse. And then uh, how about 1, uh, I don't know, how about uh, negative 1 and a half, negative 1.5, 1 1.5, 5, 2. So we should have 2, negative 1.5. So 1, 2, negative 1.5 right there. And I, th I think I can draw it now. We're going to go through this point, we're gonna go through this point, and we're going to do this action right there.